Yeah, hi, uh, my name's Dom. I'm the founder and CEO of Trash Free Trails. We're a community interest company. Hi, I'm Tasha Thompson, and I'm the founder of Black Girls Do Run UK, a running community created to inspire, encourage, and motivate black women to run. Cool, so my name is Tyler Williams Green, and I'm CEO and founder of the Outrunners which is a East London-based running community which uses the power of its community to give back to local young people. I mean, I'm a mountain biker, always have been. Uh, 1991 I started um, pushing my universal 50 pound bike up, up the forest in, in the Mid Wales and, and then riding down and seeing if we could survive. Uh, so that's first and foremost really, I've always been a user and lover of trails um, and, and I've always recognised what they do for me, you know, and um, my responsibility towards them. Um, in 2010 I uh, began working um, at the Marine Conservation um, uh, charity Surface Against Sewage um, and pretty early on in that role I found that I had an affinity towards um, gathering and organising and encouraging beach communities so I was given the Beach League programme um, and that was, was wonderful, it was a wonderful experience and I learned a lot of the, the things I, the, the ways I work and the, the, the things I'd like to achieve uh, with community building. Uh, when beach cleans especially, the marine conservation um, awareness and action was just massively blooming. Um, my father became terminally, terminally ill um, in North Wales and um, I was coming home quite a lot to, to see him and spend time with him and at the same time I started um, kind of going mountain biking with my old mountain bike friends when I was a child uh, as a way of decompressing from that. And we were out on the mountain bike trails and I started to realise that the same, I was seeing the same things on the trails as I was on the beaches, you know, um, increasing amounts of single use pollution. But what I wasn't seeing or hearing, essentially there was a deafening silence in comparison to the awareness and action on the marine conservation front. And uh, at around that time, 2013, 14, I started, um, I started thinking to myself, oh, someone should probably do something about this. And that was the first moment, you know, and, and then slowly but surely I was like, oh, well, maybe I might be slightly qualified to do something about this, bearing in mind what I do for Surface Against Sewage. And that started to bubble. Um, and once it starts to bubble with me, I, I kind of can't really ignore it. And it just, it, you know, it grew to a crescendo. And one day I saw a, uh, an etching on, on the side of a tree. You know how people etch their names into it and it's been there for 20, 30, 40 years. And um, all of a sudden, an idea for the, the kind of brand identity of Trash Free Trails sprung to me. And for me, once I had an, an identity for it, that really helped because it became something tangible for me. Um, yeah, and, 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 and once that happened, I, you know, really there was no going back. And Trash Free Trails was born in my, in my kind of head and heart. And, and then it was a case of, all right, well, how, how do I start this? And um, asked Ellie to make the logo started an Instagram page and started talking about why creating Trash Free Trails was important to me from my perspective um, and making it clear that I would like people to join in if they wanted to. And that was January 2017 and here we are. I decided I wanted to create something after a race in 2019 where me and my friend were running and we weren't sure if we had gone the correct way. So we ran to the nearest mark and said, are we going the right way? She gave us a really blank look and said, are you running the race? I pointed to our running bibs and then she said, oh, okay, you should have gone that way. We had gone the wrong way. So we ran off the wrong way, right way. And then um, kind of we had this silence. And then we said, oh, do you think that she didn't think we were running the race because like we're two black women, there's hardly any black people here. Like, and we'll never know for sure. We didn't get to ask her, we really wouldn't ask her, but it kind of prompted a conversation between us, like, you know, the lack of black women at races and what can we do about it? So I was aware of black girls run in the USA and they're like in every state and they're huge. And I said, well, maybe we need something like that here in the UK. So a few weeks later, on my holiday in Jamaica, started the Instagram page, Black Girls Do Run UK.
I've always worked in the charity sector and I've always really, really enjoyed working with young people and I've also enjoyed running. So alongside working in the charity sector, I set up a running club, which kind of had a few members and which grew. And then one of the things that I started to notice were loads of our runners wanted to do something to actively give back. So I just kind of like merged the two. I guess I'm just quite privileged to do what I enjoy doing and it just impacts the community. When you think about en environmentalist or being an environmentalist, it's not, a, it's not a label that I'm entirely comfortable with. Um, it's not a label that Trash Trails is entirely comfortable with either. What, what, what we do in, in our set of values, we talk about how we're spark makers first, environmentalists second. Um, so we're not ever trying to imply or state explicitly or implicitly that um, by picking up a piece of plastic pollution from this beautiful lakeside is going to solve the plastic pollution problem, let alone solve the wider um, environmental issues we're facing such as climate change. We're never saying that. What we, what we do believe is that by, um, by following our mission, by working to our mission to reconnect people with nature through the simple yet meaningful act of removing single-use pollution from the places we love, we can we can like we can create these little sparks in people and who knows where they may take those sparks you know if you work with 10 kids who've never had a chance to access nature before never had a chance to go mountain biking before and live in inner city wakefield what can those kids do with this with their new horizons with the, with the, with the new inspiration you help them um, find so i think that's the first thing to think about from an environmentalist point of view the other thing is that by taking action to tackle single-use pollution in these places, it's a wonderful gateway to wider environmental awareness and action, particularly if you come together with people who have shared values and then you also share your positive why for doing that. So use that as the fuel um, for further action. Another thing that we at Trash Free Trails uh, believe strongly is that in, in comparison to marine conservation or marine plastic pollution, we are the tide. So the only way that this, you know, if you're on a mountain or in the forest there, the only way that, that plastic pollution, that single-use pollution has got there, unless it's blown in, which is quite rare, so helium balloons, sometimes you'll see them, or farm wrap, someone who has used that, has set foot on that bit of trail, have dropped that. So it's a behavior change conversation. If you compare that to ocean plastic, that is like a global historical systems change problem. You know, it could have come from China. It could have come down a river from London and you're finding it on Canberra Sands. Um, it could have come from 1970 because most of plastic pollution sinks the ocean floor and gets reanimated. So, you know, we believe we can actually create a sustained reduction in the amount of single-use pollution on recreational trails by 2030. We believe that, you know, and again, if you compare that to the, that's, that's where I was going with that marine plastic pollution problem is those guys have got such a bigger job. The cool thing is if we can create a change in, in this time frame. Should, that can hopefully be inspiring to people who are in that world. Um, the other thing is that we're, we're committed to, to our mission to reconnect people with nature and to reduce single-use pollution. If we haven't made real gains into that by 2030, we need to be honest with ourselves about ourselves as an organisation and the approaches we're taking. We either A, need to take some big changes, or B, need to, need to admit that maybe we need to step aside and let someone else come in. Because that's the other thing, we don't want to become a we don't want to get stuck on a hamster wheel of litter picking for the next 30, 40, 50 years um, because obviously we're not making the change we want to see there. Um, we believe that that's, um, we believe flipping that to the positive is we believe we can, we can achieve this. The, the aim for us is to create self-sustaining environmental stewardship, stewardship communities. That's the aim, that's how it's going to become sustainable. You know, I'll be 54 in 10 years time. You know, I'll be running out of steam to, to lead trail cleans so we need to be we need to be thinking about how we create self-sustaining self-propelled communities um, so then that goes to again that when you're speaking to them we need to say we need you to achieve our mission you don't need us in, in really in that sense it's definitely an us need them but hopefully it can be um, we use a lot of uh, forest kind of metaphors so the mycelial network metaphor is lovely how, how this kind of sharing of resources and this um, letting each other know both ways of of threats and possibilities. So um, I think that's the most important thing. And, and, and again, if you want to empower people, if that's one of your objectives, the you need to you need to push it on and say you can you can do this yourselves. You know that's that's pretty much the key of it. You know rather than rather than um, giving the impression that they can't 
um, they can't do anything or take action until you've told them to or until you've supplied them with something. Um, that's, like I say, unsustainable. So Black Girls Do Run UK started in 2019, but as more of like a central London thing where we met up once a month to run together. And because we're all in different parts of London, we meet up in central London locations. The long-term plan was always to start like little groups in different parts of London. So this was the first one which started in January. So it's a social run for North West London. And um, yeah, it's great. We start from a nearby cafe and we have anything from maybe like six to 10 women turn up. We do a local run and we make sure nobody's left behind. And we just, you know, we just have a laugh, enjoy, enjoy each other's company into running and um, yeah it's great and like once a month or so we stop off and have hot drinks. So everything we do involves movement of some sort even when it's like our for International Women's Day we met up and we did a treasure hunt run like a photo hunt run so ev almost everything we do involves moving in some shape or form and just encourage and also not just moving but having fun while moving because with women sometimes you know like we don't move because we have that kind of historical memories of PE and it being horrible and not enjoying it. So we always make it enjoyable. We make sure nobody's left behind. So if somebody's at the back struggling, like we'll never leave them behind. We'll either run backwards, join them and just pick them up. And, you know, they say, you know, I'm, you know, if they say like, I'm holding you up, you're like, no, 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 no. We'd rather be held up than you're at home sitting on the sofa. We want you to be here. So don't worry about holding us up. It's fine. We want, we want you to be here. So it's really, we just really make it a really kind of encouraging, nurturing environment where, you know, you just feel safe to run slowly because a lot of, a lot of people, like a lot of people think you just need to run fast. And if you don't run fast, then you're not good enough to do it. And we're trying to get rid of that concept. One individual, two individuals I can think of, um, Annie B. Met her in, gosh, 2020 at the Landmarks Half Marathon, running her first half marathon. And the progress this woman has made is like phenomenal. She's now doing ultras. She's like always like getting PB. She does 10K under 50 minutes. It's not about time, but it's like, she's just pushed herself. She believes in herself and like, we're part of her journey, so it's brilliant. And then Yimika, I think she's coming tonight. She started running with us only last year, and she only ran 5K, and, and not only 5K, but she even went to Parkrun and didn't even like use her barcode because she wasn't bothered. And then she's done a 10K now, and she's doing a big half in September. And it's just like, she goes to all the other runs, she goes to night runs, she goes to so many different things, and she's, it's just amazing so she loves it and she's so enthusiastic and she talks about how movement changed her life which took quite a bit in January and she's just like oh it's just a joy to see it's just amazing what I really love about the power of our community is that it really sums up what East London is I think it's like a real you know East London's like a really really vibrant place and we've got so many different types of people which live in East London and I feel that a lot of communities don't necessarily impact everybody from the wider community and I think the beautiful thing about the Outrunners is that everybody calls themselves an Outrunner. It doesn't really matter if you're a young person which goes to a local academy or if you're, you know, a young professional who's recently moved to the area. I'd say, you know, everybody kind of like sees themselves within that one community and that's something which I'm really proud of and something that I think is really unique. We've got some young people who have been mentored by some of our um, older runners. Um, you know, for instance, we've got three young people who were applying for the Brit School, which is like such a prestigious school. And we had somebody who supported them through their monologues and they all got a place. Um, so, you know, because the Outrunners has been around for sort of seven years now in some capacity, we're really starting to see the longer term impact that it's having on our young people and I think you know even on a micro level you know sometimes I'll hear stories from our adult runners and they've said that they've bumped into one of their kids you know one of the kids that we work with and bumped into one of their parents and you know they've had a conversation which I think unless 
they were part of the Outrunners community, they wouldn't normally have that interaction. Yeah, so our key values are definitely about giving young people opportunity and access to things which they wouldn't normally have access to. Um, I guess that value really underpins the whole ethos of the charity. You know, our members are asked, you know, our adult members are asked to do a membership form to kind of give examples of how they're going to support the charity to do its work across Hackney and that could be through volunteering their time or it could be from like fundraising for a race for us. So I think definitely youth empowerment and giving back to local young people and feeling that you're part of a wider system and a wider community is definitely like our top value. Hi, my name's Cara. I live locally, just two miles to the other side of the valley in Melanocoid. I'm a paramedic also in Shanroost. Um, this is my first time at a Trash Free Trails event. Uh, I heard about it through a friend and I thought why not come down and support the local community. Um, this is my stomping ground for everything that I love to do. Ride bikes, walking the dog and uh, running, trail running and um, it, it's good to be out with the, with the gang cleaning up the trails and uh, giving back to the community. As soon as I arrived in the car park you just start noticing the litter everywhere. Before I even stopped the car I was sort of darting my eyes around looking for things and, and it's funny if you're not looking you kind of just have a blink of vision on and you don't notice it but when you go out looking it really is quite surprising how much is out there and what you find especially in the season at the moment sort of lots of leaves have come down so it's sort of uncovering what's underneath them as well not just what's on the surface um, the most things I think I found is poo bags uh, filled with poo and just thrown into the grass which is quite a sad sight to see really these are the places I love to come and to keep them pristine and looking beautiful is important to me. Um, so when I'm normally walking on the trails, if I find little bits of litter, I will pick it up. Um, but it's great that Trash Free Trails are getting a group together to um, work and try and make a big impact and not just, I know every little counts, but it's good to have big groups out doing big uh, litter picking searches to keep the places looking beautiful. To see the work that Trash Free Trails are doing, it is making me hopeful for the future uh, and uh, yeah, just hope that more people will continue doing it and um, yeah, like I said, every little help. So if you're just going on a local walk or a bike ride, just keep your eyes open and uh, pop it in your sack and take it home and throw it in the bin, it's that easy. My name is Linda and I've been a member of Black Girls Do Run UK since the beginning actually, since 2019. How it came about is a few years before then, um, I met Tasha and I was running alone at first, I had no one else to run with. I met Tasha and we started running together and it was so joyful because before then I didn't have anyone else to run with. So we started entering races together. And when we entered races together, we realised that there wasn't really much people that looked like us. Um, and we went to a race and that kind of built the foundation of starting the group. We wanted to show others that black women do run. So yeah, Tasha came up with the idea of starting up the group. And at first, I didn't think anything would become of it. And I think posting it on Instagram, people saw and thought I wanted to be they wanted to be part of that as well. So um, yeah, it just grew and grew and we've got so many members now. Um, Black Girls Who Run has changed my life. It has given me so much confidence because after having children, I didn't feel confident within myself. Um, I wanted to do something to help keep me fit. I wanted to do something that was quite effortless and something I enjoyed. And running has changed my life because it's made me more confident, made me a better person and giving me goals to me and challenges. Um, I think if it wasn't for the group, I definitely wouldn't be running today. It has changed my life. I've experienced, running's taken me places. I thought, I can't believe that I've actually been. Honestly, I've met, I've met so much good people in my life. I would call them 
family. They're like sisters to me. Hello, my name is Alanis. I'm a sixth year student. I think the Outrunners has like opened the doors for me to meet new people, also go to like events. Like I went last week for four days, met like new coaches as well. They gave me the chance to like join their clubs. And I think the most important thing is that they are very, very open-minded with people. Also, they give snacks after you finish like the um, training, which keeps you up and you're like, I don't hard work, like it paid off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really, really grateful to Tyler. Like, for him to be like the founder of this, he's really, really kind. Like he's always laughing, smiling, and it just makes you like happy when you come here. So yeah. <laughs>